Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're doing converting fractions to hundredths. This is a worksheet from mathdrills.com. There will be a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Now, a lot of my sixth graders took a look at this and they're like, holy smokes, this looks difficult. It's not that bad. So if you look at what the example is right here, all right, what we're looking at is there's a fraction. That's the first one. Then we have the fraction expressed differently, this time with a base of 100. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this, base of 100. And that's an equivalent fraction, and then it's converted into a decimal. And I'll show you that this process is really not that difficult. Okay, and let me break down this first example. So one fourth, each one of these, we're going to be trying to get the denominator to change in an equivalent fraction to 100. How do we do that? Well, if we want this fraction to go to 100, we need to multiply, multiply it by something. We need to multiply it by 25. But you can't just multiply the denominator by 25. You also have to multiply the numerator. And that's because this creates a fraction. Okay, We're multiplying 25 divided by 25, which is equivalent to 1. And if you multiply by 1, you're really not changing the value of the fraction. You're just changing the way it looks. So we multiply the bottom by 25, we get 100, as it says here. We multiply the top by 25, 1 times 25 gives you 25 right here. And now we have the same fraction, that's 1 fourth, that's 1 fourth, okay, or 1 quarter, that's why it's 25 out of 100. And we just change the way it looks from 1 fourth, two different versions, same fraction. And now it's very easy to write it as a decimal, okay? The decimal form is simply... 25 hundredths. That's how you would say it. There's the hundredths place. Is that five? There's the tenths place, and it's 25 hundredths. That's how you would say it. And now you see why it's called 25 hundredths, because hundredths are the, the amount that we're splitting up that particular fraction into, hundredths. And then we have 25 of them. Okay, so 25 hundredths is how you see that. Now, Let's take a look at this one. This one looks, oh my gosh, this is blank. What do I do? Well, keep in mind, we want all of these to have a base of 100. So you can go around and just write 100 in all the bases right here, okay? Every single one of these. Because remember, we want this to go into decimal form, all right? So let's go ahead and write in the hundreds because we need that for a decimal form because this, we're talking about hundreds. All right, now, the next process, okay? So we're thinking, okay, how do I go from 2 to 100? Well, I know I need to multiply it by 50. Or another way to say this is, all right, if I want to find out this mystery box right here, I need to do 100 divided by 2, and that will give me my box, what I multiply by. Either way that you like to think of it, that's how we're doing this problem, okay? Either division or fill in the blank multiplication. It's the same thing. So we multiply the 50 in the denominator and the numerator. Again, that's 50 over 50. That's equal to 1. We can do that. It's going to be an equivalent fraction. If we're just changing the way it looks, and we get 50 out of 100. How do we convert this now to a decimal form? Well, we're always going to start with 0. These are all going to be 0, I think. Yes, these are all going to have 0 in the front of them. And now we have 50 hundredths. So we're just writing this number, and this number will be to the hundredths place. Okay, so that's one, two digits afterwards, and that's it. You're done. We're done with number two. Let's move on to number three. Okay, similar process. We already wrote in the 100 because that's what we know we need to multiply by, and we have to multiply 20 to get to 100. So we have to multiply 20 in the top. Again, that's 20 over 20. That's equal to one, and we get 80. To convert it into decimal, that's 80 hundredths, and we're done. That's it. I'm telling you, that's not that bad, is it? I'm sure it's much easier than you thought it was initially. Let's jump around a little bit and do a couple of these, okay? And you're going to see that for a lot of these, you're going to do the same pattern that you did before. So anytime you have a denominator of 4, you're going to multiply it by 25. What do you know? Here's denominator of 4 multiplied by 25, and we get 50 hundredths, okay? And then that's going to be equal to 0 0.50, Okay. Another thing you can do is you could reduce this. That's one half. And that's equal to 50 over 100, and that's equal to 0 0.5. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Okay. 20 we haven't done yet. Multiply by 5. Okay, and we get 25 uh, hundredths. That's 0 0.25, and we're done with that one. Okay. 10 we haven't done this one yet. We need to multiply this by 10 to the top and bottom because again we're trying to get to 100. And what we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top, so we get 10. And then we have 10 hundredths, 
and that's the answer to that one. Okay, so pretty simple process. Now, let's say you're like, oh, I understand this, but my teacher's telling us that we have to convert to percentage also. Well, how do you do that? Anytime you have something like this, 25 per cent, cent is abbreviation for 100, 25 percent. Okay, another way to do this is move the decimal place, which I really don't want to get into for this one, but it's pretty simple. This one would be 50 percent. Okay, just so you know, that's like an extension. You don't have to worry about this for this particular uh, video, for this particular problem, but that's how you do it. Haven't done this one yet. This is going to be times two. Okay, so we get 100 in the base. In the denominator, we have 26 in the top. And again, 26 hundredths is how you say it. It's as simple as that, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you need more help on any other topics. And I'll be happy to help you and respond to that as soon as I'm able to. Make sure to check out other videos like this for middle school math, any sort of skill, whether it's middle school all the way through pre-calculus. I'm here for you. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.